So I'd like to uh, welcome all of you to the Finding Flow uh, August workshop. Um, this is part of a series that I do every month um, on a different spirituality topic, just to bring us all together on kind of this concept of finding flow and simple wisdom. How do we integrate what I sometimes call practical spirituality into our daily lives? Um, and also the beauty of it is, is to share our own experiences, give us an opportunity to share how we're experiencing God and the different topics that we talk about. So um, it's also the, the topic of a book that Paulus Press, I, I've written and Paulus Press will be publishing as of March 1st next year. So I'm excited about uh, working with Paulus on that and uh, be more details about that. So um, I just, on the blog that I wrote about this on my Monday blog, I just had this, this thought of our experiences in nature are filled with inspiration and wisdom when we become open to seeing them as sacred moments. Nature molds our personalities, it anchors us in our human existence, and is the connector of our soul with being. The divine, the creator, communicates with us in and through our relationship with nature. So tonight, we're going to explore those ways that God does communicate with us and talk about how does God do that, How what are our experiences, um, what we'll do, kind of a, an agenda, we'll, we'll go through Alexio Divina of our lives, and we'll spend a few moments just with our imagination in the quiet, um, and I'll invite us through a guided meditation to recall some time in your life, maybe recently or years ago or when you were a child, whenever, um, some time when you were inspired by nature's wisdom, some time when you really felt God speaking uh, to you through nature, and after Lexio, we'll really address these five questions. Does God speak to us through nature? How, how do we know? Are we just making that up? And are there ways that, that we can ground us in scripture to know that God does and maybe some of the saints? And when we experience God in nature, what are our possible responses to it? Um, there's three ways that we can often experience it. Um, and how do we know when God's speaking divine wisdom to us through nature? And uh, Belden Lane will talk about a book that he wrote about the four characteristics of when you can kind of be sure that, yeah, here's the fingerprints of God in that experience. And what are the gifts that God bestows upon us through nature? And then we'll end it with what spiritual practices uh, help you connect with nature's wisdom on a regular basis? And we'll kind of talk about um, some ideas and really kind of like, a, like we have a big bread basket here. Everybody will put in whatever they want to offer about practices that connect them. And then you can take back with you what, 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 what you experience. So my hope is it will be pretty interactive as, as we move through it, basically. So but that's kind of the plan for tonight. Maybe the best thing we could do, how about we um, just go around and our virtual community, if you want to tell us your name, where you're from, and just what led you to join us tonight. So again, your name, where you're from, and uh, what, what, what nudged you? Where, how did God nudge you to join us tonight? Somebody want to want to share first? Yeah, go ahead. Sure. Hi, I'm Thanks. Sue Howard. I am living in Grand Rapids, and um, nature really fills me up, and um, just kind of really fills me up till I can go back and do what I need to do with work or home or whatever the case. So um, when I saw this topic, I was very interested to hear how how nature fills other people. Mm -hmm. Neat. Cool. Thanks, Sue. <clears throat> well, I think it was the Holy Spirit that sent me here because I just happened to be reading this morning when it was here, and it's something that I keep thinking. Um, I told Brian that I'm missing. I'm a nature gal. I'm at a lake house in Blairsville, Georgia, but I live in Atlanta, Georgia, and I don't like missing anything. So I'm, <laughs> I love it, but I'm not sure that I'm getting what all of you get out of nature, and I don't like missing FOMO. <laughs> Good. Well, hopefully you'll you'll gain, gain that wisdom tonight. Yeah, I hope so. I think I will. Yeah. Uh huh. Hello, I'm Kevin Laughlin. I live in Garden City, Idaho, which is near Boise. I live uh, about uh, 300 yards from the Boise River, oh, and wow. about uh, uh, a quarter of a mile from the Hyatt Hidden Lakes um, uh, Nature Reserve. And I walk with people on both locations on a regular basis. And I have a nice garden and people meet me in the garden and I pull weeds and listen to them as they, uh, <laughs> um, they tell me about their, uh, 
their stories, and then I feed them out of the garden before we go on our walks. Wow, that's neat. Thank you, Kevin. That's that's a cool experience. <laughs> I'm Bill Thornburg, and I live in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And um, well, I grew up in the church, and I've been a part of the church for all, all my life, and and followed traditional Christian practices. But it it just kind of feels like something's missing. So when I saw the title of this um, webinar, I was really intrigued by it because I've always enjoyed and felt God's presence in nature. So excited to see what. I can learn. Uh, great, glad you're, glad you're with us, Bill. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's one of the, just to follow up on that. One of the things when I went to Dominican Center here in Grand Rapids for formal training as a spiritual director and, and a master's in pastoral counseling, it was that experience of God that was missing. I had a lot of head knowledge, but the good Dominican sisters were really, that's a good foundation, they said, but they really um, taught me through different practices um, to experience God in that one-on-one -on -one relationship in different ways. And that just really plunged me into a, a deeper experience uh, with meditation, contemplation, nature, and those things. So yeah, hopefully that'll be life-giving for you today. Yeah. Somebody else want to tell us your name, where you're from, and what nudged you to join us tonight? I'm um, Shija. I'm a religious nun, and uh, my the head office of our congregation is in Switzerland. Mm. I'm an Indian, therefore I am because I am one of the general team members of the congregation. Mm -hmm. So I am here in Switzerland. Wow! Thank you. For and uh, as you all know, Switzerland is uh, a wow. beautiful the country is full of nature all around oh, I am I am all part of the nature and uh, uh, beauty of nature is captivating here so I want to know more about how I can be connected with God being in and with the nature here. can you tell me you can't hear me <laughs> Uh, we can, we hear somebody. <laughs> How do you, I get. Is that Jim and Pam? Yeah. We can hear you. We can't see you. Usually <laughs> um, in the, at least on my computer, on the left-hand corner at the bottom, there's a thing called start video, but we, we can hear you for sure. But do um, you see a start video button? Can you see us? Maybe not. Okay. Okay. Well, CG, we are so happy you're here and that making the sacrifice to be up at one o'clock in the morning. That's great. Yeah. We appreciate that. <laughs> Somebody else want to share? Yeah, I'll go next. Um, I'm Claire Kent from Charlottesville, Virginia. Um, and I have just always felt very connected um, to nature. Um, mostly walking. Walking is is much better for me than running. Um, running, I feel like I miss I miss something. Um, but just walking and wandering, and at at different points in my life when I was really looking for um, for some kind of affirmation from God that that everything would be okay or was okay, um, particularly after a death of of a loved one, um, I have just always felt um, like I was given some kind of very um, meaningful sign, mm -hmm. um, not even when I asked for it. I mean, there were times when I just thought I'm not going to do that, but I still got one. Oh, wow. um, yeah, yeah, which is really, really cool. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, I feel like it's undeniable and I'm always interested in hearing what other people have experienced also. Oh, awesome, great. Glad you're here, Claire, yeah. And that walking, what a great way to experience nature. Yeah, mind, body, spirit, for sure. Yeah, that's cool, yeah, yeah. super. I can go next. Uh, my name is Joyce Gordon and I'm from the east suburbs of Cleveland, Ohio. Oh. Um, I am a spiritual director in the Ignatian Spirituality um, Jesuit 
uh, frame, although I'm Methodist, um, <laughs> but it mixes. I yeah. guess I'm, I'm here because I don't use nature the way, or don't put myself in place of nature, mm -hmm. where I could perhaps benefit more from hearing from God. I love uh, meditation. I love reading of the desert fathers and mothers. And I get my inspiration from that. So I know that I'm missing something mm -hmm. by not placing nature as part of my daily life. And I'd like to incorporate that a little bit more. Super, great. Glad you're here, Joyce, yeah. yeah. Lori or Beth? I'll go. Um, I'm from Troy, New York. Um, I have, over the past year with COVID, I reconnected with a friend who's a Adirondack 46er. Um, I'm nowhere near that, but we did some hiking because that's something we could do. Um, so I got back out in nature a lot more and that's where I feel like I'm the most at peace and the exercise, um, <clears throat> and just some beautiful times and scenery. Um, but what really got me to this was, um, I was having a bad day and I went to my sisters and I was almost in tears and I, I was going to do something with her. And I said, I just need to go to the town park and like regroup. So I walked around and I saw a heron and I've never seen a heron before, especially like in our town park. And then I think that same day or the next day I got your email. Mm. And so I was, because it was talked about, I don't know if you'll get into like the spirit totems, the animal totems or spirit. And so I looked it up and it was all about, you know, for a heron, like looking within and, and knowing yourself better. And that's kind of where I'm at. So mm. I just thought it all kind of like came together. Wow. Um, Neat. Yeah. Like a sign, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, no surprises. Yeah, exactly. We'll talk about that. That, yeah, oftentimes one of the characteristics is God surprises us with, you know, kind of the serendipity of, of the crane and then you know, the workshop and, and the totem. Well, that, that's neat. Yeah, super. And Beth, are you there? Yes. Well, Beth Rymel from Grand Rapids. Um, I have had many spiritual experiences in nature and, um, there are certain places here in Michigan that I am particularly attracted to. One is Hoffmaster Park. Mm. And um, at times uh, on my days off, I would like to go there um, by myself and meditate and get that sense of oneness that we are all, we are all one. But I also think about one of the poets who talked about nature red in tooth and claw. And consequently, I think about what is going on now in um, New Orleans and the fact that nature can be both calming mm. and frightening yeah. at the same time. But nevertheless, uh, and there, I also am able to um, conjure up experiences that I've had in my lifetime when I've been uh, either horseback riding way out in the country on a dirt road and praying and just taking in the uh, serenity, if you will. Um, I like the fact that someone here said that she is a Methodist. <laughs> uh, <laughs> because that, <laughs> well, that, <laughs> that is my own background, although I am part Episcopalian and part Methodist <laughs> and part Catholic and part of a lot of other things. But... <laughs> At any rate, I, you know, in a, I won't go on and on anymore. <laughs> oh, that's great, great. Glad you're here, Beth. Yeah, and that's the beauty of it. I, you know, as you talk about our different different faith traditions, you know, I just and I think in our our Catholic tradition, Vatican II, really helped our you know Catholic tradition recognize there's universal truth, and we all have pieces of it. And I, it is, I think it, again this universal um, experience of God, I think it enriches each one of us. I often think of Thomas Merton, you know, Merton was you know, definitely kept his home root of, of Catholic and, and, and being a monk, but he would go out and learn all these other pieces that helped enrich his own faith tradition. So yeah, I'm glad that we're all able to, to be here and, and join together in those different traditions. So that's good. So, um, what I thought we would do is, um, you know, in, in 
in, in formal we, uh, prayer, we talk about Lexio Divina of scripture. You know, we may, might take a piece of scripture and read that one or two or three times and uh, let the words really speak to us. But one of the things that Dominican Center uh, opened me, me, me to and, and others in, a, in a, the, the, the coursework we did was we can also do a, a Lexio Divina, a divine reading of our own lives. And so we can use that with nature or other experiences we had. So I thought to, uh, in, in a minute here, I'll invite us to go into the quiet um, and then I'll just guide us through a meditation where I invite you to recall a time when you really felt touched by God in nature. It could be like uh, you, you share with the crane <laughs> that Laurie just mentioned, or it could be something in the past or something that happened today or just something that didn't really touch you. It just was a good experience of, of God in nature. So um, if everybody wants to just uh, kind of get into a, a comfortable position in your chair, if you would like to put your feet maybe flat on the ground <clears throat> and uh, close your eyes, and maybe take a couple of deep cleansing breaths and just, just feel your body, feel the breath, the pneuma, the, the Holy Spirit breathing in and through you. In a second, I'll ring the, the bell and just spend just a few minutes allowing you to use your imagination and recall, when did you experience God in nature? So let's begin. So as you sit here in the quiet, allow your imagination to recall some moment where you were in nature and you felt God's divine presence. Where were you? What time of the year was it? What season? What was the part of nature that just surprised you and captured your, your attention? Was it a bird, an animal, a lake, a mountain? What was it that just caught you by surprise and filled you with awe? What did you see? Did you smell anything? Did you hear anything? Was there an emotion that rose up with you when you experienced nature, or even now as you recall it, is there an emotion that you could feel there in your heart space? Nay, but if, if there is an emotion that touches you or touched you then, Allow yourself to bask in that moment of time there in nature. To be as if you were there all over again now. Was there any wisdom that you felt as you experienced that part of nature? Was there a word, a whisper from God? Something that just felt like the ordinary experience became extraordinary.
And now if you'd like, just thank the creator, thank God for that experience in nature. Receive it as gift and lift it up with gratitude to the God that surprised you with that experience in nature. And when you're ready, just slowly bring yourself back to the chair you're sitting in. Bring yourself back to this moment, knowing that you can go back to that experience anytime you want. And that God has many more of those types of magical experiences for you. And when you're ready, feel free to open your eyes and come back. And those that would like to, anybody want to share what you, what you recalled, what you experienced? What was the moment in nature that spoke to you? I'll go. Super. Um, I, um, one of the hikes with my friend that I mentioned was to um, Lake George. And we hiked up, um, I forget the name of the, the mountain, but we gotten up and we couldn't really see any view. And then someone came by and they're like, do you know if you go down a little bit, there's a ledge and you can see. So mm -hmm. we went there and you could see, you know, all the other mountains in Lake George and the sun was just shining down on it. And it was just one of those moments like you were talking about. And it was kind of like, if we didn't run into those people, we might've thought that was all the hype was. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was just a beautiful, um, sight. Yeah. Yeah. So that beauty that you experience is that kind of what the, and the same, the serendipity that the people pointed you to that spot. Yeah. Right. Wow. That is cool. Was there an emotion you felt? Um, just kind of like peace and awe. Um, yeah. It was just a beautiful view and just the fact that we almost didn't know it existed there. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And those clearly are the fruits of the Holy Spirit. It, you know, we feel that peace, that joy, that beauty, all that love, you know, those are the fruits of the Holy Spirit. That's when we know, yeah, just this beauty is, wow, it's, it's it just that sense of peace. And my spiritual director will often say, receive it as gift and lift it up as gratitude. It, it, you know, so we don't try to intellectualize it too much because our brain will start dissecting it or trying to figure it out. It's just receive it as gift. Lift it up with gratitude. Sounds exactly that. That's what you did, Lori. You know, just it was just a gift. Yeah. How cool. Thank you. Anybody else want to share what how God touched you in nature? Um, I'll share mine. Sure. Um, I mean, this is the one that that just comes to the forefront of my mind when I think about you know, kind of the unexpected elements of it. Um, so it was the summer that my, and my mother had passed away. She had passed away in mid-June. So this was at some point a little later in the summer. And I was just taking a walk in our neighborhood. Um, and fortunately we have this kind of older neighborhood that is still really good for walking. No sidewalks or anything like that, but you know, you feel very safe walking on the side of the road. and just a very peaceful neighborhood to walk in. And um, so I was just walking and I was thinking about my mother. And then I also started thinking about my sister-in-law who had passed away probably about 15 years before my mother. Mm -hmm. And it was a terrible um, bout with cancer and she was young. She was only 41. 
Um, and, you know, it was probably the first time we had lost a significant, immediate family member mm -hmm. uh, was, was her passing. And I started thinking about whether my mom and Joanne would be conversing, you know, with each other mm. in the afterlife and be together. And all of a sudden, I had this, almost at the same time, this beautiful scent of honeysuckle mm. when there wasn't any honeysuckle around. Wow. And this really wonderful breeze um, that was not there. Mm. It was not a breezy day. Mm. So I had this breeze and this honeysuckle. And I was just like, oh my gosh, you know, that was just this moment of affirmation for me that yes, my mother and, and Joanne, my sister-in-law were together. And the really weird thing is, is I just thought of this and I had not thought of this before. When I was growing up, my mother was an Avon lady. <laughs> when I was a teenager, you know, and curious about all the smells and the makeup and all the things that Avon had. The one thing that she used to give me all the time, um, they had this product that was like a, um, a roll on stick on your, on your wrist. Mm -hmm. And she always gave me the honeysuckle. Wow. I know. And I just uh. that because I was sitting here thinking about honeysuckle. Why honeysuckle? Yeah. And all of a sudden it was just like, Oh my gosh, that was the smell that she thought I was probably 13, 14, you know, when she was selling Avon. Yeah. And, and, and you know, so I could wear a little bit of the makeup and mm -hmm. my friends loved coming to the house and trying on little light eyeshadows and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, but she always gave me these little honeysuckle things that you could um, roll on your wrist and wow. it smelled just like honeysuckle. Oh my gosh, that is amazing. Oh, no. Woo. <laughs> uh, be, I mean, we talk about the communion of saints and it's such a theological, it's a wonderful concept, but I wonder if, you know, again, your mother and your sister-in-law's spirits live mm -hmm. on in the communion of saints. Wouldn't it be like God to allow your mother, you know, with God's assistance to give you that fragrance just to, you know, affirm, yeah, yeah I'm up here in heaven with, you know, my family mm -hmm. and sister-in-law. It's like, yeah, I, I just think, yeah, that's one of those miracles. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, you were, and you were aware of it. That's the big thing we'll talk about is, wow, you, you received it as, you know, as a gift and just, yeah, it just spoke to you, a deep sense of wisdom and inspiration and affirmation. Wow, that's cool. <laughs> and cool that you just made the connection with the, I know, with the honeysuckle. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't think of that before, <laughs> but it just hit me because you know, that was an acceptable fragrance, I guess, in her mind, you yeah, know, sure. for me to be wearing at that stage. Oh, how cool. But yeah, very cool. But I do feel like, um, I do feel like you have to be open to it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you go out to walk, mm -hmm. I think you need to be watching and appreciating mm -hmm. whatever it is you see. And, you know, rather than just doing the thinking thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, which also can be helpful and, you know, all that, but, but just um, being just observant mm -hmm. and looking at things with wonder, yeah. just yeah. being in that kind of posture, yeah. yeah, I think is opens you up to that layer of the divine that may be you yeah. might not ordinarily be unless you say, I'm intentionally going to appreciate whatever it is that God brings across sure. my path on this walk. Yeah, that wonder, that childlike spirit. When we're kids, we do. That, oh, butterfly, yeah. well, you know, we're, we're experiencing it all. Yeah, and bringing that childlike spirit of wonder. Yeah, you're exactly right. And being open to that. Great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have an experience they want to share? I had one a couple of weeks ago. Um, so I've, I've been an attorney in Grand Rapids for 38 years and have slowly transitioned to up counsel in the law firm and really moving into the second encore career as a writer, a teacher, workshops, writing books, 
Um, and it's scary because it's an unfamiliar area for me. Um, but but it's also, I, I like the challenge, the invitation, and, and it's fun. Um, it's kind of my passion. It's my spiritual gifts that I love. But I was going through a period, I actually had to clean out my desk at the office because I hired another attorney. I still have a little place in the basement uh, <laughs> that I could use with a little computer. But um, I was driving home in this transitional sp stage, you know, that I was in kind of liminal. And all of a sudden in our neighbor's yard, there was a, a fawn, this beautiful deer, just a fawn, just those beautiful spots on her. And she was all by herself. There, I didn't see any other, the mom or anybody around. And she was just standing like strong and innocent, but, but like, and what rose up with me is she's standing in her own power. She's standing in her own power, the power of her innocence, her grace, her beauty. And it was just that, that affirmation from God, what rose up with me is we all, I need to do that. I need to stand in the, not, not my power, not my personal power, but the power that God places in each one of us. So it's like, Brian, can you stand in God's divine power with your gifts and use those? It's like, okay, if that dear little fawn can do it and she's brave out there. I, I guess I could, you know, get, get my running legs on and, and, and move into the second phase too. So the, the fawn just really spoke to me of, of, of that, that, that spirit of, um, just the gentleness of power, you know, that God's power. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm. Anybody else want to share anything? Hi, I'm Sue. I will. Um, I think the, the one image that came to me right away, and this happens um, in the winter time for me, um, like looking at the pine trees or the evergreen branches and how utterly perfect the snow is on each one and they're symmetric. Mm. And um, for me spiritually, um, I think that helps me remember that there's only perfection in God and that um, if, I, if I have chaos going on at work and it's so nice to jump outside and just look at a tree with snow on it, it just really helps remind me um, to turn to God. Mm. And um, yeah, there's a lot of symmetry in nature. I, I have found, and um, I just think it's a, a means that God is speaking to me or speaking to us, mm. um, that there's only perfection in God. Wow, that's beautiful. Wow, yeah, yeah. that is so cool. Yeah, and so, you know, we've kind of already answered the question, but it's important to does God really speak to us through nature? It, 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 you know, and Richard Rohr says that, and many of the other um, that mystics will talk about the fact that you know, the only way we can really talk about God or experience God is through metaphors. So the, the snow, you know, the divine order, the, the, the perfection of the snow is really a metaphor for a characteristic of God, that God is perfection, as, you know, as, as you were saying. Um, and so it, it, it gives us a, a characteristics of what God is about and, and or maybe virtues that God's inviting us to experience. So I think we just affirmed that God does speak to us through nature. But again, we want to make sure that we're not, you know, out here doing, uh, you know, heebie-jeebie stuff. So Job clearly says that. So in Job uh, chapter 12, Job says, but ask the animals and they will teach you or the birds in the sky and they will tell you or speak to the earth and it will teach you. There's the, again, the earth teaching you or let the fish in the sea inform you. Which of all these does not know that the hand of the Lord has done this? In his hand is the life of every creature and the breath of all humankind. Um, you just think about it. I mean, way back then, Job's getting tortured and he's going through all these horrible things and his friends tell him it's all his fault and he needs to repent. And he says, no, it's just, this is, I, I'm letting Nate, God speak to me through this experience and through nature, basically. And if you think about Jesus, I mean, you know, 40 days in the desert, he went into nature, you, you know, to be alone. Where was he? You know, the scripture says he was often found every morning in prayer. Where did he go? To the hillside, to the lake, you know, so Jesus certainly, you know, encountered his father, uh, you know, in, in nature. <clears throat> and St. Bonaventure says, Christ has something in common with all creatures, uh, with the stone he shares existence, with the plants he shares life, with animals, he shares sensation. And with the angels, he shares intelligence. Thus, all things are transformed in Christ 
since in the fullness of his nature, he embraces some part of every creature. Um, you know, um, Teilhard de Chardin has this theory of, uh, 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 the, he's a scientist and paleontologist and a, and a priest. He died, I think, in the 60s, but he's written a lot. And he says, basically, his, his theory is that God was the divine spirit of love. It always existed, but, but God was a spirit. <clears throat> and God decided, I'd like to put my spirit of divine uh, love into all of creation. And so Teilhard, you know, uh, hypothesizes that perhaps the Big Bang was God putting, you know, God's divine spirit in every particle of, of creation and in, in human beings and the earth and the trees. And so everything has that spark. Every piece of matter has that spark of divinity within it. And so when we're seeing things in nature, we're seeing the divinity of God in, in, in that and the divinity of God in, in ourselves. So, um, yeah, so I mean, there's a, it, clearly nature is certainly one of the ways that God does speak to us and, 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 and Jesus models that for us. Um, you know, what, one of the things in, uh, I took a class years ago at Western Theological Seminary, and Stephen Chase was the professor. He was writing this book, Nature is Spiritual Practice. That was the name of the course. And he says, you know, when we experience those things in, in nature, there's usually one of three ways that we can experience it. One is we ignore it. Oh, well, whatever. You know, and we go back to our to-do list or we miss it because we're so busy in our head. So oftentimes we just miss it um, or we're we're too closed, you know, as Claire was saying, sometimes our heart isn't open to imagination, that childlike spirit. So sometimes we ignore it or, or miss it, you might say. Other times we cling to it. Um, it's that sense of, I must have this. So we grab the wildflowers and, they, you know, bring it back to our, our house or our cottage and we stuff them in a vase uh, to try to capture, you know, the, the wildflowers. Or, you know, we take our iPhone out, you know, and try to get the perfect picture of the sunrise or sunset, and we miss the experience because we're so busy with our cameras, basically. So there's a sense that we can cling to it. Um, or sometimes we can cling. My, my, my sister, I love her dearly, but she's been all over the place with her faith tradition, and the most recent one was Ekinkar, and so she'll see something in nature and says, I think God's inviting me to move to Texas. You know, it's like, really? That's kind of a big life decision. You think you want to kind of ponder that, talk it over with your a counselor or spiritual director before you make that? No, I'm sure, you know, so she, she's kind of clinging to, you know, the message. And it, so it is something that we, again, uh, we can't cling to it. It's like Jesus said to Mary, Mary, don't cling to me, you, you know, experience me, allow the Holy Spirit to speak in and through you. And the other way really the, is to receive it as a gift. Um, we can be awed by the unveiling of nature's surprising beauty, just that sense of awe when we look at a, a sunset or, or a mountain or a lake. And then as my director ta taught me, receive it as a gift from the creator, like affirm, yeah, this is, this is a gift, this moment uh, with the crane, that moment looking out over the uh, over the lake, um, the, the smell of honeysuckle. Yeah, that that is a gift. Affirm that it is the gift that God is giving us. And then again, so we don't cling to it. We lift it up with gratitude. Thank you, God. So there's this kind of a, almost a body movement of receive it as gift. Like, wow, thank you, God. You know, if there's a word, a phrase, something that some wisdom that's be, yeah, you receive that as gift that goes along with it. Um, and then just lift it up with gratitude to God. Okay. And, and we then just kind of savor it like a good cup of tea or coffee. You know, we let the Holy Spirit have the Spirit's way with us with that wisdom. And um, so we're not like, you know, trying to get walking around saying, I know that this was, you know, a sign to move to Texas, you know, trying to convince everyone. It's like, we just receive it as gift. We ponder it. Um, many times in spiritual direction, um, you know, people will share, and I often share with my director an experience in nature. So it's another fun place to kind of unpack or in your quiet time um, with meditation or contemplation, you know, if you've had an experience to bring it in that quiet time and really that conversation with God, what, what were you speaking with me? You, you know, it's amazing that, you know, that with Claire just right now, you know, God just boom, <laughs> gave you that Avon, you know, insight. I mean, there's the wisdom of God just popping in when you're ready to receive it, you, you, you know. Um, and then just pondering that questions when we stop, listen, and just ask, Creator, are you imparting to wisdom to, to, you know, to me through these landscapes and creatures? And maybe turn it into a conversation with God. What, what is it that you're 
what, what is it that you're speaking to me? And obviously we don't necessarily hear spoken words from God these days. I haven't heard those in 62 years, but, but there's a sense of that voice, that whisper of God that, that, that can, you know, kind of rise up with us. So, so those are just ways that we um, can experience it. And, and obviously the invitation would be to receive it as gift and ask God what wisdom is God. And it could just be the simple sense of beauty. You know, that, that's, that's enough. It's just, it was beautiful basically. So the next thing is, okay, and, and this kind of goes back to BD's uh, question is, okay, you know, I love nature, it's wonderful. How do I know that it's, you know, something that God's speaking to me through nature? And Belden Lane in, in his book, Landscapes of the Sacred, says our experiences in nature are filled with inspiration and wisdom when we're open to seeing that they're, they're sacred moments. Um, uh, they believe, Lane and many others, as, as we've talked about, believe the divine communicates with us in and through our relationship with nature. And so Lane in his book talks about four characteristics um, that we can kind of say, yeah, this is probably the fingerprints of God or the, 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 uh, the breadcrumbs of God. One is that sense of surprise. Um, each of us that we talked about those experiences I didn't go looking out for a fawn, you know, uh, you didn't go looking for honeysuckle necessarily, you know, you know, you weren't looking for uh, what was beyond the, the path. Um, it finds us. There's that sense of, you know, nature just finds us. Um, it, it, one of the experiences Steve Chase had us do in this class, Nature Spirituality, um, we, we, he would say, I want you to take the next hour and just walk around. This is at Western's uh, um, seminary campus in Holland with a lot of trees I, and go let a tree find you <laughs> and then hug the tree. When, the, when that tree has found you, you'll just know what it is. Hug that tree and just feel what rises up with you. Is it the tree's strength or the, the wisdom of the tree or the roots going real? You know, what, what is it that, that speaks to you? So it's that sense of, of surprise. Um, we don't choose them. They usually arise when we aren't expecting or looking for, for something sacred. It simply appears. Um, it might startle us. Um, and in short, God reveals wisdom to us through creation when, when we're ready for it, basically, when he says, yeah, you, you know, I need a sign here, or uh, I, I want to speak this wisdom to this person. And what happens is what could be seen as ordinary becomes extraordinary. So yeah, if I see a deer, it's like, oh, there's a cool deer over there, whatever, on my way. But if we move beyond just the physical you know, experience of a deer or, or whatever it is in nature um, and say, you know, I think there's something di deeper in here. I'm sensing God's divine presence. You know, you think about Jesus used ordinary bread. <laughs> um, I mean, that's, can't get more ordinary than a piece, <laughs> than a loaf of bread, basically, an ordinary uh, part of our food. And what did God do? God, you know, Jesus put God's divine presence in bread. So the ordinary loaf of bread became the body of Christ. Um, and so wouldn't it be like God that, you know, as God puts his divine, God's divine presence in different parts of nature, all of a sudden it, it communicates wisdom to us. Uh, we sense there's a divine presence here. So those willing to look deeper realize the message unfold through the ritual of silence, listening and waiting. Um, in those moments of pondering, what could just be seen as ordinary becomes extraordinary and, and sacred, basically. Um, the other is the message is transforming. Um, it changes something on the inside of us. Um, you know, uh, the affirmation of the honeysuckle was, yeah, my mom and sister-in-law, they're, they're in heaven together. Yeah, that's a transformation. There was a peace experiencing that overlooking Lori, overlooking the, the on the ledge the, the lake yeah something inside of you is like wow how cool was that that it just begins to to mold us and shape us um <clears throat> i have that same sense with water whenever i experience water we have a cottage on a lake and <clears throat> i love to go down when i get get to the lake is I, I literally take the water and and just kind of baptize myself with the water three times i just you know bless myself with it and I can just feel like all the stress of the world just washes away. It's like God is baptizing me all over again through that simple water. So there is a transformation and it can be just simple. It doesn't have to be, you know, life, not like we're levitating you know, on, on mountains or anything, but there's something inside of us that inspires us and we change a little bit on the inside. And the wisdom is personal and universal. Um, 
So again, when I saw the fawn, standing in your own power spoke to me very personally in the sense of, yeah, you know, uh, stand up buttercup and get out there and, and move into the second career that I'm, I'm launching, you know, in you um, and move beyond where you've been. So uh, stand in your own power. But it's also one that speaks to all of us. You know, can we claim the gifts God has given us and use them in life-giving ways for myself and others? So there's a universal truth that it points to. Um, and that's why I think so many times sharing our stories, um, you know, the story of the honeysuckle, it reminds me, yeah, my mom and dad are up in heaven and they're enjoying heaven. And I have those moments when all of a sudden I feel their presence. I smell roses, which was my mom's uh, yeah, in a, in a favorite thing. Yeah, so that universal truth is like, yeah, there is a communion of saints and they do still communicate with us. So there's a deeper wisdom um, that, that is both personal, applies to us, but sharing the story, other people can take the universal wisdom. Yeah, I, 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 I think that's true for, for, for all of us, basically. Um, so those are kind of the characteristics. And any thoughts on that? Is that makes sense of, that, that, you know, when you've experienced nature, there's been a surprise <clears throat> the ordinary becomes extraordinary. It somehow transforms us on the inside with some deeper inspiration or wisdom. And the wisdom is personal and universal. Any thoughts on that? Does that make sense? Any questions or? You see those characteristics? <clears throat> yeah, I like that statement you just made that it is personal and universal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, not just one or the other, but yeah. both. Yeah, the both end of it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. My own experience, Brian, was to remember that I'm finite and God is infinite. Mm -hmm. And um, taking those holy pauses when we're walking mm -hmm. or sauntering <laughs> as, uh, along the way is really important. Um, oftentimes when I'm with folks, I'll say, look, look. And we'll all stop and, and we all look, but we're looking at something different, mm -hmm. not necessarily the same thing. So one may be pointing to a bird, another might be pointing to a, a tree, some might be mm -hmm. pointing to a rock, some might be pointing to a, a dog on the trail or a, a, a crushed vehicle that's there. Mm -hmm. And does, is that what our life is like is what the last metaphor we worked on and we'd hiked four and a half miles and found a crushed vehicle that was holding the ground that they'd used to keep from erosion from taking place. But we made, took that metaphor to, well, the next mile was about, well, how has COVID made our lives crushed? Mm -hmm. And so that was really good. And then the other piece I'll point out is that your uh, meditation took me to the Sweetgrass Hills in Montana, uh, yeah. where you climb 3000 feet above uh, the plane and you're at 6,500 feet. And in July, when uh, the uh, sun goes down, you can see the sun just below the horizon across Canada. Oh. And having done that with uh, farmers and ranchers over the years in Montana, and you can see all the way to Great Falls and into Alberta and so on like that. And the winds are pretty amazing at 6,500 feet. Whoa. And I guess feeling, sensing, smelling the winds and looking at the, uh, the stars and the Milky Way in particular mm. when you're there gives you the sense of your finiteness. Yeah. And, and the pause it takes. And of course, you don't sleep during the night. All you do is look at the stars and feel <laughs> the wind all night long as that takes place. And then when the sun starts to rise in the east and you feel that warmth, you realize that you haven't slept during the night mm. and, and you still want to go back down the mountain in a way where you can relish that and hold on to that the rest of your life. So yeah, that's a, a pretty, was a pretty powerful trip. And I took that trip back in 1982 and I hadn't been back there since then. So thank you. Wow, oh, geez, <laughs> how cool is that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that, that vastness, when you look at the, you know, the stars and the Big Dipper and all, and the thing that we're just one of a million galaxies, basically, at that God is so infinite. Yeah, yeah. Or when I look at like, like Lake Michigan, for example, you know, where you can't see the other side, it's like, wow, that's 
how immense God's love is. It's it's bigger than than the ocean or the lake. It, you know, it's 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 just huge. Yeah. And God gave us this creation just to enjoy and, and be part of. Yeah. 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 Uh, I can say something. Um, I take for granted sometimes the nature. Mm -hmm. uh, because this place is uh, full of beauty with, uh, with the lakes and the tall mountains and woods. Uh, on a sunny day, it's so beautiful to move around into the nature, walk, go for wandering. And uh, when I go through the woods, tall trees standing so strong and firm still. Mm -hmm. uh, I have experienced uh, sometimes uh, a transformation like healing within me. Uh, in the nature, I feel when I when I am stressed out in my office, and when I move out into the nature with the fresh air and the greenery here, Switzerland is all over green. Mm -hmm. That gives me a kind of lightness within me from the stressful situation. And um, this summer, uh, we had many times rainbows. Uh, suddenly it appears sometimes it lasts long and then I realize oh God uh, God of hope mm -hmm. God of surprises like in the Old Testament mm -hmm. God of promise I, ex I like the best uh, the rainbow and I experience yeah it is not all lost mm -hmm. uh, there is still hope a kind of uh, this kind of experience uh, nature gives me but I now when I listen to you, I feel that I, I have the opportunities and, and I have the best uh, to get out of the nature for yeah. my, own, uh, my own self. Yeah, yeah, that healing. Yeah, wow, that's powerful. And, and that aspect of surprise, the rainbow all of a sudden appears or yeah, the trees. Yeah, that, and the ordinary becomes extraordinary. The transformation, the healing that, that you, you mentioned that you, you felt or just the calming of, of nerves and tension from you know, the day to day work that we do. Um, yeah, just all those four characteristics in there. Yeah, yeah, so cool. Anybody else before we want to share? So just be aware of those, those four characteristics. Um, and and I, I think the important thing is that we are in the age of the Holy Spirit. You know, we, there's the age of the Father when, when God uh, spoke to the, the, the prophets and, <clears throat> and, 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 and the kings. Um, and then there's the, that didn't quite work out. So God says, okay, I'll send you Jesus, a human being. Um, to teach you unconditional love, how to, how to live that, you, you know, this amazing connection with the, the divine father. And, you know, we obviously didn't quite get that one right, but Jesus says, you know, I father forgive them. They know not what they do. I give them, I, you know, I give you my spirit. And then what age are we in now? We're in the age of the Holy spirit, you know, Pentecost came and for us Christians, there's the belief that the Holy Spirit now lives and in, in resides within us. And that Holy Spirit is that sense, as Ignatian would say, is that sense of imagination, that childlike spirit, that openness that, uh, you know, Claire had mentioned about uh, to just allow the Holy Spirit, I love to say, letting the Holy Spirit have its way with us, <laughs> you, you know, in our imagination and our childlike spirit. So in one of those amazing ways, he says, is nature. And, and she, she that makes perfect sense. Sometimes it becomes so normal, we, 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 we just get used to it. And then we have to remind ourselves, oh my God, this is beautiful, these trees and, and everything. And so that's why it's so good to talk about it, because it brings us back into those experiences of, of why, how amazing God speaks to us through, through nature in, in that way. So um, the next thing I just briefly go through is what are the gifts that God bestows upon us? Obviously, there's many gifts, <clears throat> um, but three in particular. One is just that, that quiet, when we're open to receiving the insight and inspiration that nature wishes to offer us, God graces us with quiet minds. You know, our, our minds get so busy. 
Um, and, and each of you we talked about walking. I mean, walking is such, our bodies are moving. <laughs> you know, they, the, the, years ago, someone taught me that our, our, uh, the Heart Math Institute talks about our minds can only think one thought at a time. So if our bodies are busy walking or doing something, um, um, then the, the mind quiets because the, the body is in the mind saying, oh, I'll be quiet because the, the body's working here, basically. So it gives our, our minds a little bit of a rest or it gives us something uh, larger than just theory and, and worry. It gives us uh, you know, something deeper to chew on, the beauty of nature. So it brings us into the present moment and, and like Bill said, yeah, that how beautiful it is that, you know, you, you teach your, the, the people you walk alongside, let, let's stop for a moment. <laughs> you know, let's just stop and pause here. Um, and it just brings us into that present moment. We're so busy, and particularly in our Western world, you know, of planning for the future and, and worried about the future. And that's okay to plan, but what about this present moment? So it quiets our mind. It brings us into the present moment. It reminds us of the beauty, you know, like, like, like uh, you know, you were saying is, yeah, there's a lot of negativity around us. <laughs> I mean, in the whole world, but I go back to, you know, it was pretty much a mess when Jesus was here on earth too, you know, and we somehow survived that too. And, it, you know, so 2000 years later, it's where God's still being patient with us. And so, yes, there is a lot of negativity, a lot of bad things happen. Um, even in that last month, we talked about the negative bias um, that uh, scientists uh, are saying our neurons uh, have developed this negative bias of always thinking the worst. It's kind of a self-defense mechanism that focuses on what's wrong so that we can kind of protect ourselves. And that's okay, you know, I mean, if we live in a place where there's lions and tigers and bears, yeah, we gotta be a little careful they don't jump out and get us. But if we always have a negative bias, you know, about everything, um, we forget the beauty. And so it's that both end. Yeah, there's negativity in the world, but but God graces us with this beauty, the simple rose or a flower or a bird, that crane that, that, that you saw. Um, you know, through nature, God reminds us the world is still a mystical place. In those moments when we experience the transformation of a monarch butterfly, it's like, wow, the unconditional love of our pets. Um, you know, I, I have a, 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 my dog, uh, Bailey, he's a rescue dog. And I, you know, often think Bailey and, and my other dogs I've had are the deepest expression of God's unconditional love. Um, and in fact, I teased my wife who's a cat lover. I said, remember dog is God spelled backwards basically, you know, so, but it's that unconditional love. You know, I can get mad at Bailey and, and, and Bailey just loves me basically. So again, that beauty of, of, of our pets um, or the wisdom of an owl hoot, hooting in the night. Um, you know, the extravagant beauty of nature, we focus our thoughts on the goodness of creation. And as we experience those moments, if we're open to it, our hearts join that heavenly chorus. And uh, like Psalm 19 says, the heavens declare the glory of God. The sky show that his hands created them. I mean, you know, when you walk out and sometimes it, it, you know, I go for, I go for a morning walk with, with Bailey, my dog, after my meditation time. And, and if there's a full moon or the stars, it's just like, yeah, the heavens declare the glory of God. You, you know, it's like, this is what's right with the world and God is still in control. And yeah, just that sense of awe, basically. So we received experience as, as you mentioned, as a gift, we lift it up with gratitude. You know, we don't, we don't have to intellectualize it and try to figure it out. We just receive it and, and, and savor it like a cup of good tea. Um, and and you know, with them. Oh, go ahead. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say this really kind of touches my, my day. Um, mm -hmm. I do see nature as being a threat in some degree. A threat? Okay. A threat. It yeah. can be bad as well as good. Sure. Sure. Um, my car has hit two deer. Oh. Um, deer weaving in and out of traffic. So the deer thought that they were crossed the road and they weren't. Oh. They just cleared one lane. It's happened to me twice. Oh, yeah. And years ago, and it's still it's still in my mind. Yeah. When you talk of your dog, I live alone and I have a little tiny Bichon that is only six months old, as sweet as can be. And I need to take him out at different times um, at night if he barks and has to go out. Well, two nights ago, I took him out and a deer was hiding behind the bush. And when my light went on, the deer, you know, scattered, mm. scared the bejeebers off of me. Mm. last night I took the dog out and it was quiet 
and the sky was beautiful. And I walked to one area with my dog and he did some of his business. And then I thought I'd walk across the driveway and go to the other side of the driveway. And I was in a peaceful state. I mean, it was a beautiful scene and everything. Um, fresh air, finally the humidity had lifted. And I thought how quiet this is as I walked towards the light. Mm -hmm. And I looked out and there were seven deer, mm -hmm. seven of them in my front yard. Wow. Resting with their ears perked up, lying down. Mm -hmm. I spooked initially <laughs> with memory of how they had been a negative part of my life. Yeah. And then I thought that's kind of unique to see them so peaceful. Yeah. I almost expected them to attack me because quote unquote, I had attacked them. <laughs> it's funny that that thought came back to me after years of my car hitting, mm. hitting the deer. So um, I do think there's messages both in good and bad um, mm. of how nature can turn on us at times or we can turn on nature. Mm. Um, and when you least expect it as well. Yeah. When you least yeah. expect it. Yeah, yeah, that that yeah, that both end of that that mm -hmm. yeah, you know that the hurricanes down in mm -hmm. New Orleans, yeah, I mean there's certainly devastation that happens and and uh, and the beauty then of people pulling together to try to right care right. for each other. So there's that you're right, that, that's a good point. Yeah. And the deer sitting there just looking at me like it's okay, we can share this lawn together. <laughs> and I'm thinking, can we really share this lawn together? Can the dog hurry up and do its business so I can go inside? So I think when I do go outside at two o'clock in the morning alone, um, I may not be quite as fearful of the deer, knowing that they can share the same earth with me. Yeah. And as we'll talk about, one of the pieces of wisdom from the Native American tradition, um, uh, the Native Americans teach us that every God has given every animal um, like a virtue that they mm -hmm. are. Mm -hmm. yes. kind of tells them yes. that we need to teach you. So one of the virtues of the deer is gentleness. Um, ah, it's interesting nice that, to know. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That you experience that with those seven deer and, and some symbolism around that seven too, you know, it's kind of, yes, interesting. yes. You know, it's kind of, and there was nothing gentle about seeing the deer jump on my, on yeah. my roof, fly <laughs> over and my car was totaled. I mean, it was a, it was a really strong memory. Yeah. And then to uh, see them just lying there looking at me was like, wow, this yeah. is just so different. Yeah. Yeah. And that Demons. sense of too, that how we, you know, I mean, you know, the deer were here long before there were cars, you know, and he, as humans, we've introduced things that, you know, that yes. are good. cars are good, but, you know, we've also taken over their land in some yes. ways. So yes. how do we live at, at peaceful? Part of that is going to be there may be collisions that, that occur. Because and I, I think the deer have learned a lot because they don't get into the street as much as they used two years ago. Uh, ah, Seriously, I think they've learned. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Wow, interesting. So it's interesting. Yes, thank you for that. Yeah, thank you. Good story. Yeah, an experience. Yeah, and it's cool yeah. how God brought it back to you. Of yeah, dear gentle, we can share this space. Yes, yes, you know? and it kind of wipes away a bad memory, and I can now approach it with a a gentle yeah. memory. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So in the Native American tradition, um, and and it doesn't necessarily always be uh, native, but that the, they teach that. Um, Every, as I said, every every animal, every piece of creation, um, God has placed a unique virtue in into that piece of creation, and the animal or the piece of creation is our teacher. And if we're open to listening and receiving what the Native Americans call the good medicine, um, the good medicine meaning the healing power, the the you know the positive that the Creator offers through them, um, we can gain that wisdom. So. Jamie Sands in this book, Medicine Cards, The Discovery of Power Through the Ways of Animals, uh, writes, um, I, I'll just read a, a short piece of it. Each animal has been assigned one of these lessons. Uh, 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 you know, an ant um, teaches us resilience and patience. I mean, I look at an ant walking across a sidewalk, like carrying a piece of bread. It's like, geez, oh, Pete, it must be like they're walking across, you know, the state of Texas for, for them. Um, yes. The deer, you know, is that sense of gentleness and, and direction and also a sense of power that they're able to be in that. Um, and when we call upon the power of an animal, we're asking to be drawn in complete harmony with the strength of that creature's essence. 
is, is what Jamie tells us. So one of the things that we can do is um, we can Google, and I've got the, the site uh, later in here. Good. When, when an animal comes across my path, um, my wife and my best friend, we, we kind of, and, and again, we hold it loosely. We don't get it caught into, you know, some something funky, but, you know, um, we have a skunk that's been in our neighborhood. Our, our, our neighbors, um, have like three bird feeders and it's beautiful to watch, but uh, we watch this beautiful white skunk, uh, you know, and she's just gorgeous with this. So uh, again, what I do is I, I, I Googled, what's the um, a spirit a totem uh, for a, a skunk? And the skunk is, um, you know, it, it, it's a very gentle animal. It doesn't typically attack but it knows how to hold its own ground. If I would I went out there and challenge it, or my dog went out and challenged that skunk, that skunk would know what to do. You know, she'd turn and then she'd spray, but she doesn't normally do that. So she's so beautiful to watch mm -hmm. um, and, and teaching me that sense of, you know, I know how to take care of myself. You know, mm -hmm. I, 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 like in Michigan, we call it Michigan nice. I know how to be nice to people, but I also <laughs> know when someone's, you know, pushing my, my buttons and breaking a boundary. I also know how to gently push back, you know, so she teaches me that, that spirit. Um, so it's just something fun you can do is, you know, if an animal is really speaking to you, just uh, Google, you know, what's the Native American totem for this animal? And it may have a whole bunch of different things on it. And what I do is I just pick the one that speaks to me. So, you know, the, mm -hmm. the, the fact that the, 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 the skunk is um, just a very loving, kind, animal uh that, that's you know but it knows when when to, to push back basically mm -hmm. protect herself so the, the irony of that or the serendipity of that is my um mantra sacred word in center prayer centering prayer is gentle oh isn't that something? isn't that something so when i get off i'll just say gentle yeah like, you know, yeah. like the like the feather back on the um path on, on yeah. the river it's just yeah. gentle so gentle. yeah Ooh, that's beautiful yeah. yeah and so here's that link Again, it, 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 the, I'll send you the uh, the outline too, the link. This is on my Google Good. Drive, so you can pull that up along with the recording of this. But and it, there's other ones out there too. But I just you know, and some of them are a little funky. You got to be careful that you know, it's like okay, buy you know, buy this whatever, and you know, read your tarot cards. It's like okay, I don't go to those ones. But <laughs> when it's really a rich Native American tradition, um, you, you know, that that really you know, like Merton says, we can learn from all of our faith traditions, you know, it really grounds me. And again, I receive it as gift and lift it up as gratitude, like, okay, God, or I'll sit in my quiet time, you know, um, and I'll Google the animal. Oh, yeah, what, what were you talking to me about, God? Oh, this is what you were speaking to me. So it's just a cool way of communicating with God. So what, what, um, any questions about that, Th those, those gifts of nature? So again, the, God gives us wisdom, um, beauty, and, and pulls us into the quiet moment, that, that, that stillness, that's be still and know that I'm God in this moment, you know, through what I'm expressing to you. So, yeah. What, what spiritual practices help you connect with nature? <clears throat> Why don't we just kind of share, are there things that you do? Some of you mentioned that, you know, just the, the walking in nature. Um, but what, 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 what do you find is helpful that you, you do that really helps you um, either just center yourself and quiet yourself. You, 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 CJ, you talked about, you know, when you're in the office and stressed out, just to go outside and take some deep breaths of you know, fresh air. Yeah, yeah. So what are some of the practice? Because one of the things I think we've lost in our, in our traditions, um, you know, we, we're real good about after the enlightenment, you know, we think, therefore we are. So we real good about thinking, but now we're stuck in our brain. And so these spiritual practices are really, you know, if we, if we, if we, if we want to have a healthy body, we go to the gym or we do exercises. Those are our practices. If we want to deepen our spiritual lives in our relationship with God and ourselves and others, there are practices. Um, in, the, in the book, The Finding Flow, and you often see that pattern in there, I, I really looked at um, what were the practices that all the, you know, Jesus and all the, the, the great the wisdom keepers in our lives. It's really, you know, they spent daily time in solitude. Um, you know, could be walking in nature, could be meditating, doesn't have to be sitting on a meditation cushion for extroverts for, like my wife. That doesn't work. She likes to walk, basically. And that's how she experiences God. But spending, you know, a good 10, 20 minutes or longer every day to just connect with yourself and God, that solitude. And then spiritual reading, 
you know, uh, is another practice is scripture or uh, and additional books of, of people that are, you know, just a little bit further than us on the on the spiritual journey. Community, who do you surround yourself with that helps you grow? Um, you, you, you know, family, friends, uh, your church, um, a spiritual director, perhaps um, a, a spiritual friend, and then your spiritual gifts. You know, that's why on my website, I have that spiritual gifts inventory you can take for free. Uh, that really helps us. I never re realized even, I never heard of that until I was in my thirties. I was like, oh, wow, these, these are my gifts and how am I currently using those? So those are kind of the practices. Um, and I, I think, you, you know, community nature is kind of part of that community box. Basically, we surround ourselves uh, part of our community is nature, and how do we practice, you know, being in uh, spiritual connection with nature? Um, anybody, K Kevin, you mentioned too. I mean, the things. I that guess you what yeah. you brought to mind to me was uh, my work with labyrinths outside here in the Sagebrush mm -hmm. Steppe. Because we don't have winter like you do in Michigan, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we, we we have. 12 months of being outside in the desert here. Mm -hmm. And so I often do that in the winter. And with my directees, I live uh, two blocks from the local Unitarian Universalist Fellowship. And on their campus, they have 20 elements that can be done in outside that are borrowed from monasteries all around the world wow. to trigger thought through metaphor. So they've got bridges and steps and water features, but they have a marvelous labyrinth. And the first time people go to the labyrinth is they will just go in and say, what word comes to mind? Uh, and then take the same amount of time going in as they do coming out. Mm -hmm. um, then they're able to see how that word connects to nature. And of course it's outside and no matter what season it is, they relate that. We also have it at our local St. Luke's hospital and a great, um, labyrinth that they do outside the doctors and the nurses that are involved with COVID right now when they need a break they'll go out outside and walk the labyrinth to deal with the anxiety and stress they're dealing with the VA hospital for our veterans coming back from Afghanistan the ones that have went to, through Vietnam and Korea and World War II I can take them to the labyrinth and say just walk the labyrinth what comes to mind and I guess the thing that I would challenge you on is to uh, invite them to embrace the discernment model that best works for them mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. when they're on, you know, coming on or off the labyrinth. Mm -hmm. So we spend a lot of time, and you mentioned it, in our heads as Americans. Mm -hmm. But um, the model I use is a Carmelite model by Larkin. Mm -hmm. And he says uh, we need to do cognitive, affective, mystical, and affective relationship. Okay. And I've been using that model for 11 <clears throat> years. And that underlies everything that I do when people walk the labyrinth. Because mm. so often the Americans are involved with judgment <laughs> rather than uh, discernment. And there's all the Ignatians have marvelous models, the Benedictines, the Franciscans, the Dominicans, all very different. Mm -hmm. But I try to get them to say, well, what now you've taken that labyrinth is a discernment model, apply that to your real life and what you can do. Yeah. And uh, University of Southern California has great. Um, medical research on use of the labyrinth. Mm. And I think you need to check into your Michigan State University. I'm sure you're all Michigan grads, but uh, <laughs> Michigan State being the land grant university is the That's one. Great. And the Ohio State University <laughs> also has great materials there. So, uh -huh. so you don't know, if you haven't looked at their nature pieces, both land grant institutions that have good resources that can take every one of the people here to a greater level. And the last thing I'll say is, um, I'm working uh, in teaching a class this fall on St. Francis de Sales, mm. and she, 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 uh, um, yeah. I, I, I would encourage you to look at her, his natural pieces in his introduction to the devout life. There's some mm. really powerful things in there that I use to trigger people to think, and mm. that's your part of the world right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sure. Wow. Good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. The labyrinth is, like you say, so amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else? What the... Sounds like some of you go for, for walks uh, on a daily basis. Is that a, does that connect to you? Is that a spiritual uh, mind, body, spirit experience? Yeah. When do you, when do you usually walk? What time of the day? Good question. 
<laughs> depends on the weather, right? <laughs> it does. It does. Yeah. And other distractions. Yeah. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, I do let other things get in the way sometimes. Sure. And then I'll walk late in the afternoon and I'll think, oh, why did I wait? You yeah. know, because it's never as pleasant once it's gotten hot and humid and so forth. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, I think morning is always wonderful if you can do morning. Yeah. You know, or, or while it's still light. Yeah. You know, evening is nice. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. But I always find that once I get out there, I walk longer than I thought I was going to walk because mm -hmm. I don't want to come back. Yeah. <laughs> it just takes uh, you. That's yeah, cool. it's so pleasant and um, such a nice break from everything else. Yeah, yeah. Another spiritual practice I enjoy is, uh, you know, when, when you feel like you're just spinning, like the day gets overwhelming and you're, you know, feels like you're multitasking and you're just fragmented is, is just to stop and, and, and look at a tree or go out, if I can go outside and just look at a tree, particularly a, a, an older tree, and just think how deep those roots are. And I, I pretend in my own mind that my feet are grounded and that there's roots um, you know, from my feet that go deep into the ground. And I've heard someone say that's the Christ energy, you know, that Christ walked the earth. So Christ filled the earth with Christ energy, Jesus's energy. And so I, I imagine as my roots, you know, my feet are, you know, finding my feet on the ground. It's like I'm grounding myself in the roots of God's, you know, of Christ's energy that goes. And it just somehow, I mean, even, I, even as I say that right now, I can just feel my body kind of relax and tingle. And, it, you know, there's no words or wisdom that come, but I just kind of come back to, to my center, uh, you know, my groundedness. So that's another is just I love, let trees <laughs> ground me in the Christ energy. <laughs> yeah, I got really curious about trees a couple of years ago. Um, and I mean, I've always loved looking at trees, but I actually went up and touched mm. trees on some of my walks. Mm -hmm. And I was just, I was just amazed at that feeling of like stability. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, unless you're with, at a puny tree, but you know, most trees, you're, they're just immovable yeah. I mean, at yeah. the trunk. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's so solid. Mm. And, and when a storm comes, they, they, they sway in, in the wind so that they don't break. If they were just be rigid, like when something happens to us, or, oh, you know, we kind of go into that defense mechanism mode. But if we just kind of, you know, go with it, sway with it like the trees do. Um, yeah, exactly. And the energy, yeah, the, the, the strength of those of trees, particularly older ones. Yeah. 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 You know, one of my, oh, sorry. I think someone else is trying to talk. Oh yeah, you gotta unmute yourself. Uh, uh, unmute. There you, there you go, perfect. What was it? See, I was, I was just going to talk on that. Uh, the tall trees, they um, uh, move with the wind mm -hmm. that they don't break. Mm -hmm. So that, that has taught me a kind of uh, flexibility in life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. Yeah, for sure. Bill, what were you? <laughs> Yeah, one of my favorite ways to connect um, with nature too is to take a walk. And I used to, um, at another a previous job that I had, I'd take a walk at, during lunch time, mm. day that I was at work, just to get away from work and just uh, um, enjoy nature and feel the peace of it. But I had this tree, an oak tree, that I would just love to sit beside. And then, as you mentioned too, I, I just love to pretend like, um, well, the verse, um, I, I'm a tree planted by a stream, and then my roots go deep down into the into the water, and then I pretend and just imagine um, the springs of living water flowing up in me, and it, it really does give me peace, and it gives me strength, and it, it just connects me to God that way. Yeah, wow. Yeah, it's powerful. And, and again, as you say, the connection with God, that divine presence, the, the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. peace that, yeah. 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 
And this is an amazing. God gave us all this stuff. It's it's right underneath our nose. <laughs> you, you know, it's 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 there. Yeah. The other for me is mountains. I oh, I, I don't live near mountains, uh, obviously in Michigan, but boy, when I've seen a mountain, it's like there's just there's a meditation. Um, I can't remember the, um, wherever you go, there you are. Uh, I can't remember the author, but anyway, he, he does the mountain med meditation, and he talks about you know imagine that you're a mountain, <clears throat> and you know, you're strong, you're centered, um, you, you know, and the seasons come and go. And that's the emotions that happen to us. You know, you might have a storm in the mountains, you might have lightning, you might have sunshine, the birds rest on the mountain. Um, but the mountain doesn't change. It's, it's you know, it, it's, it's rooted, it's, it's grounded. And if we can allow ourselves to be centered like the mountain and really kind of feel the mountain inside of us, um, you know, then uh, we can let the emotions and thoughts that, that they're going to go through our head all, all, all day long, but, but we're immovable, you, you know, because we're, we're, we're grounded like a mountain in, in our faith in God. So, yeah, so mountains are another one. Um, have you ever noticed, too, like by a, a stream, um, I guess in some traditions they'd call that the chi energy, just the sound of a running stream. It's like I can just stand there and go, Oh, you know, I just feel it. It really relaxes my whole body. And it's that sense of hearing that somehow just it's transformative. It's that, that energy of God's divine energy of the water and the rocks moving against each other. It's like, ah, there's just a sense of calm with that. Yeah. So BD, what are, what are you learning? <laughs> you got to unmute yourself. Yeah, there you go. Uh, still muted there. Huh. Oh, yeah, she's got two different. You got two things going, yeah. Right, oh, now I think I'm okay. There you um, go. I did learn a lot. I think what I learned, I think, is that I was overthinking it. Mm -hmm. I, I, um, living on a lake and being in nature all the time and in the water is, it's the presence of God. Somehow I had in my mind, when they say God is in everything, that I was missing something. Mm. But from what all what you all are saying about being nature and God, I do have. So that's a really nice thing. When we're um, when we're out on the lake or I hike with some people, I always feel the presence of God. I was just trying. <laughs> Somehow I got my words twisted. And I wanted to see God mm. in it rather than just feel God yeah. while I'm part of it. Yeah. Does that yeah. make sense? It does. So people talk about nature and I'm thinking, well, darn, I, I want that too, you know, but um, yeah. from what you all have said, I do have that. I was just thinking it was more than I have. And so it was very helpful that I, yeah. Because I, I feel like when I'm out there, the peace, and I always think of Solomon and all his power couldn't do this. And it's been pouring rain here. And I thought, you know, the most powerful country on earth, China or the U.S. or Russia, none of them could stop this rain. Uh, yeah. This rain is <laughs> from the heavens and God. Yeah. And, you know, um, and the most powerful could not could not stop this. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I do have a problem with the deer because it's eating all my plants oh. more so than ever. So, you know, I'm not really thinking how sweet and tender they are. <laughs> um, and they do up here think they own the land. But I thank you because I have learned from all of you. And um, it's actually just put me in a very relaxed, grateful state oh, that I did have it. And I that I did have it. I do have it. And I'm not missing anything. Yeah. So thank you all. Yeah, good. That's great. Yeah, it's that experience, like you say, the feeling God's presence. You know, I often think of, I don't know, uh, remember those Where's, Where's Waldo books? I don't know if you had those. You know, and there's Waldo's, you know, they have all these busy pictures. And you know, they, I did that with my kids. Like, where's Waldo? Well, I often think of, where's God? You know, and I was thinking, as you were saying, BD, you know, when you're walking with someone, well, there's God in the person you're walking with. You know, and there's God in you and there's God in the rain, um, you know, because God created it. And so it's really that experiencing it. And I think you're right. I, I think, you, 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 you know, what we do is we get caught in our head 
and we want to little physically see God. It's like, well, you know, God chose to reveal God's self in a lot larger ways than just, you know, one or two little, little things and stuff. So yeah, yeah, that's powerful. I had an experience too. I was up at our cottage and the, the waves were really, really strong. And one of my kids is they're kind of fighting with each other just a little bit. And, you know, of course, as an, as a dad, I think I can fix it with my adult children. It's like, no dad, you know? And so I was sitting there and I had that same experience with the waves going. It's like, God kind of just saying to me, do you think you can stop those waves from you know, r- rushing on the beach? Like, no, I can't do that. And there's kind of like, so you think you can fix, you know, this, this the frustration that your kids are experiencing with each other? No, I guess I can't do that either. I, you know, so again, how nature teaches us through that experiencing it. So good. I'm glad that you, you, you my, know. my laptop, my computer, or my iPad may die at any time, but Okay. If it does, I just want to thank all of you and tell you it's been a joy. And yeah. um, hopefully I'll see you again on a Zoom. Yeah, super. So anything else that... So I just put together uh, just some uh, some some other ways. Um, again, that what's your totem? If you see an animal, um, you know, like Jamie Sam's and Native American, what's the spirit? What's the animal's totem? How is God inviting me to integrate that virtue from that animal into my life? Um, you know, um, it's just kind of a fun practice and th- there's a link, but you can just Google the animal and native American, um, and then, uh, gratefulness.org, this, uh, Fabiana Fandavila, she offers a free seven day. It's just an online exploration of restoring our sense of kinship with nature. So on the outline, these are actually hot links if you, uh, that you can go to, uh, all, all seven of them. And I think, I don't know how long they're going to be up there, but it seems like that they're, they're leaving it up there permanently. So just uh, you could do a seven day uh, kind of a, you know, nature practices and they're real simple things to do. They're like real short. And then she'll say, for example, on day six, you know, go for a walk and just experience the smell. What do you smell? What do you hear? What do you see? You're just using your senses. So they're really very practical um, spirituality pieces. Books on spiritual practice. Again, uh, Stephen Chase, my professor at Western uh, theological seminary uh, uh, wrote that book nature of spiritual practice and then a field guide he actually the, uh, a field guide that you can use it as spiritual practices um and yeah just you know my invitation is just let nature find you this week you know to really be a, a, a aware of if you if you're stressful just uh, you know this C just said you know just walk outside find a tree you know um, as beth said go to hoffmaster park you know over labor day weekend um um, and and when you when nature finds you, you know, really just have that fun conversation with God. What what wisdom, God, do you wish to speak to me to this part of nature? How are you speaking to my soul? Um, you know, and just have fun with that. And again, don't look for it because if we overlook, now we're overthinking it. It's like you know, God's grace is not something we can force. It comes when when in, in you know when when we're ready for it. So just be open to it. Have fun, bask in creation's beauty. Let God speak wisdom to you through the wonder of nature. Um, that makes sense. Any questions or other things before we do our closing prayer? Just a little bit, Brian, I'm new to this. Do you send these to us then, these outlines to us? Yeah, so uh, probably tomorrow um, I will um, download it to my YouTube page okay. and then I'll send you the link. There'll be a link to uh, this webinar and um, also a link to the, the agenda. Uh, on right, my Google thank you. Drive, basically, yeah, so, yep. And actually on my YouTube page, there are some of the other... Uh, workshops we've done too so if you want to go back there's um how do you find your happy um uh, so there's different ones down there too so just feel free to take a peek at those. great thank you yeah Brian, i just want to suggest uh, what came to mind is we did a study of ladato c back in 2015 2016 and the prayer for the earth that is in that that ends that uh, ladato c is really worth taking a look at if you haven't done it i put that in the the chat box okay um, that was brought up today at our holy conversations which is it's now what six years five years later and people are still talking about the prayer from the earth from ladato c if you haven't looked at that uh, particular document okay yeah and sure. um i just think that uh, there everything you covered here today is covered in ladato c if people have not read that um and understood pope francis's wisdom there and it starts out with saint francis's wisdom 
and ends with it. So I think mm. that's what you're another St. Francis. So uh, yeah. thank you for uh, uh, bringing that to our attention today. Yeah, thank you. That's yeah, thank you very much. And I think when I send the link out, I think the chats are available too. But um, yeah, it's a year of creation. And that's by Pope, Pope Francis, right? Was it? An, uh, yeah, okay, perfect. Yeah, thank you. You know, and that's the beauty of these workshops is we all learn from each other. You, you know, mm -hmm. I, you know, there's a piece that I can take from it. And there's that, that spiritual reading piece right there. You could take that care of creation and read that. And, and just, you, you know, my dad used to say, take what you can use and throw the rest away. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like, yeah, we don't have to do it all, but, you, you know, take the nuggets that, that you experience. And I think that's the invitation, um, particularly, you know, with, with um, a webinar like this is, you know, maybe uh, before you go to bed tonight, just pondering what one thing might you do as a regular or continue doing as a, as a spiritual practice um, to connect you with nature? You know, is it, yeah, I'm going to take, you know, I love my dog because she has to go for a walk in the morning and the evening. And you know, that's a really great way for me in addition to my quiet time, you, you know, so is there, is there a practice that you can really adopt that continues to connect you with nature and, and open to that spirit. So yeah, good deal. And then um, I thought we would do this uh, Native American prayer as our closing prayer. It was by the Lakota Sioux Chief Yellow Lark in 1887. Um, and what I thought we would do if um, we just kind of go around and, and someone wants to read, uh, we'll kind of take turns, read one stanza until we've read them all basically. So. Um, and may want to start great spirit prayer. Oh, great spirit, whose voice I hear in the winds and whose breath gives life to all the world. Hear me, I need your strength and wisdom. Let me walk in beauty and make my eyes ever hold the red and purple sunset. Make my hands respect the things you have made and my ears sharp to hear your voice. Make, make me, wise. me wise. Go ahead, you go. Make me wise so that I may understand the things you have taught my people. Let me learn the lessons you've hidden in every leaf and rock. Help me remain calm and strong in the face of all that comes to us, me. Help me find compassion without empathy overwhelming me. I seek strength, not to be greater than my brother or sister, but to fight my greatest enemy, myself. Make me always ready to come to you with clean hands and straight eyes. And maybe let's say the last one together. So when, so when life fades as the fading sunset, my spirit will come to you without shame. Amen. 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 Great. That's beautiful. Yes. Wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you all for being here. Thank for you sharing. a great night. Gifts and yeah, may God's nature continue to reel. God's wisdom to you in so many amazing ways. So, yeah. The next things to all. Yeah. My yeah. next workshop, I, I was kind of kind of doing the last Tuesday of the month. So it'll be on uh, uh, September 28th. And the topic, I, I, always, I always kind of talk to the creator. Okay, God, what are we doing next month? Um, and the one that it, it is the spirituality of self-care. Um, you know, there's so much talk about self-care and I think, again, there's that both and we can be really selfish, like, oh, just give, 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 give. And then we get grumpy and angry or we can be so, um, you know, selfish that all we do is care about ourselves. And how do we find that spirituality of self-care that, that, that's rooted and grounded in loving God, loving ourselves and loving others, basically? So that'll be the topic. And again, it'll be on my weekly blog um, I always uh, put that, you know, as it, with a, the link to it, uh, probably not, not this month or not week, but the following week, and then stick it on social media. Feel free, uh, you know, I, I just, I love these, the interaction. And so if there's somebody that you're interested in 
would think would want to join these, um, you know, feel free to give them the link to the sign up thing when that comes out and um, they'll get my, the weekly uh, spiritual uh, simple wisdom things that come out every Monday. And yeah, just uh, feel free to, to share with whatever or whoever the God spirit uh, nudges you to. So, yeah. So thank you, everybody. Have a great yeah. evening. And thank, thank you. you. And thank you. Thank you. In Switzerland, thank you, C. Jeff, for staying up late with us. Little <laughs> more. God bless you all. Bye. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Thank you.